Hey guys, what's going on? Well, I just got this unit in. It's a really nice one. It needs cleaned, but I'm going to clean it here. And I'm going to switch knobs out and pretty much just show you what I go through when I clean a radio. If I can get that locked in. And if I can get that zoomed down. See if I can't get any more light. Ah, uh, not really. But it's a really good radio. It's got tags, full tags. I've run them. They came out clean. Go ahead and take that. The antenna off, take the battery off. This is an invaluable tool. When you pull the, when you take the housing out, make sure you take it out in this way. Don't try a screwdriver, don't try anything else with it. Once you get it to this point, you've got it free from the housing. Check the window. And right here is where you're going to be looking. You get it to this point, and you pull down just a little bit. There's a little bit of suction. Okay. Once you have it to this point, you can see right here the flex connector. You just simply remove it. And there's your housing. This does have AES-256. So, with this out of the way, toggle switch is in good shape. The inside here is where a lot of dust and dirt gets trapped. It doesn't hurt the unit because the unit's got the seal on it. To get these knobs off, you pull up from the back and you maintain pressure on the base because it's got to slip over this lip right here. Can you see that? I hope you can. I'm going to probably get a phone call. Uh, but that's the stock knob. It's not in bad shape, but I put NY, uh, NYPD or NYFD knobs on them. I'm going to go ahead take a soft bristle brush here move this just kind of get in all the crevices Go along the back. Just like brushing your teeth. Go along the dial. And hold it down so none of that stuff gets on this. I'm just using a mild glass cleaner. In here, in, in the antenna port, you're going to get a lot of dirt, and you just go through a crevice at a time, and you clean that out. It's going to take a minute because I do need to run it out to my air compressor. I don't need to do that, but I'm go going to do that because I do that on all my radios. I do that 
you guys can go ahead and grab whatever you want. But you just go through and you just clean out the inside ridges and the inside lip on the top. And you're going to get a little dirt down in here. You need to clean that out. There's really, this radio isn't in bad shape at all. It's in very good shape. It's a pretty radio. As far as radios go. Get the bottom. There is some dust and dirt that kind of accumulates around the inside. Of the volume knob because it rides right on the base. I'm just going to leave it like it is. I'm not going to take it out and blow it out. I don't think it needs it. I think it's fine. Then, it's pretty simple. But, you don't want to spray stuff directly onto certain parts. Go around. The knob turns really well. But when you have the housing off, it's very easy to do this. When it's on, it's a little bit harder, but you know, it's still very doable. This housing I'll probably just sell. I've got to get rid of some housings. But all these little crevices need cleaned. And you check the contacts. And I even go in the holes. I know I'm going to get a phone call here. Never fail. But anyway, you just give it a nice buff. It's not a bad looking housing. Got the dust off from around there. Let's take a look at the seal. Seal's in very good shape. The O ring. So ring's kind of a bitch to get back on, but it's very easy to do. It's not that big of a deal. Around here, some dust will accumulate. Just around the base from where the antennas have been off or, you know, stuff like that. I just use a little bit of armor all and, you know, it seems to work all right. This is usually pretty dirty. In this case, it's not. You can see the dirt that's gotten off of this unit under the towel. But to be fair, I'm actually Cleaning, uh, cleaning up a charging unit too, so as you saw it is just how it is. But you just clean the membrane, check for tears all the way around it. And there's usually a lot of dirt and dust on, on these, but in this, in this case there's not which is, you know, that's a time saver. 
I'm gonna go ahead and treat that, clean this and treat it. Sometimes you can use rubbing alcohol, but it will not damage, at least I'm not gonna say it won't damage yours. Uh, in all the radios I've used, uh, I've never had alcohol damage a, a case, a housing. But I use, yeah, I think it's 71%. If you use a higher percentage, you're going to get, uh, you can dilute it a bit, and sometimes I'll do that. But at the same time, if you're trying to get a mark off your radio or something like that, uh, chances are it's pretty screwed up anyway because of the way they made the mark. There's the center detent that goes right onto this. Hold on a second. So, let's check out the housing. Take a look at the inner housing along here. You can go along the base and get in these grooves. Hang on. It takes a bit of time. It's not something you can hurry. And I'm not hurrying. When you hurry, you screw shit up. But you just go around the housing, check the inside of it, and this is where I kind of go to work on. The interior, it's one of the main reasons I take housings off. As you can see, it's in very good shape. It's a good looking housing. The window's not bad. I'm not going to show you exactly where I, well, what the hell this is used housing. I'll go ahead and put a mark there. Uh, I put a mark there, you can't see it now, you will be able to see it. here in a minute. That's how the housing looks now. This is how the housing looks under UV light. And I'm not going to stop there. Be very careful of these boards. LCD looks good. Just a few markings on the interior. It does have the AES-256, but as you can see, you can't even tell 
that it's on there. This needs to dry a little bit. Don't get your fingerprints on the screen. That's really a bad idea. Because then you have to deal with the screen looking like shit. But if you're going to mark up a radio, mark it up on the inside. Don't mark it up on the outside. And if you are going to do that, just UV it. Uh, you know, use a UV pen and, you know, you'll be golden. Because uh, taking a carving knife and, uh, you know, or a whatever you want to use is a bad idea all the way around. neighbor out mowing today. About damn time he does that. You work the o-ring back around and you're gonna have to play with it for a bit. These o-rings aren't easy to get back back on but you've got to get it on right. I can do that. It just takes a little bit of time. You've got to be patient things like this. Patience isn't always my strong suit, but at the same time when it comes to a radio, you've got to be. This is the connector, this is the connector. Line the flex up. Hard to do this while I'm trying to hold on to the O-ring. I'll do it though. Gotta move it away from the camera, sorry. Now, when you have it like this, you've got to be really careful that when you press down on here, there goes the O-ring. When you press down on there, stick uh, with the O-ring. Hang on a second. You got to clean that screen up. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. The O-ring needs to be seated on. This is a really critical part of the assembly, of reassembly. And usually I wouldn't do this the way I'm doing it, but while I'm at it, I want to go ahead and get the antenna boot. Alright, alright, come on you. Get on there. Get on over. And always look along for the teeth. There we go. Keep it in an upwards position. Check that LCD. Make sure there aren't any fingerprints. Because if there are, you're going to have to take the damn thing apart again. Don't do that. Make sure that this is seated. Give it a push with, with your finger. Check the LCD right here. It's looking good. And pull your head out of your ass. Because... keypad looks a lot better on than off. That's not a bad looking cleanup job, I don't think. Well, I've got this off. I know this thing will roll on me, but just got to be really careful with the LCD.
Alright. And there goes the demo ring again. The O-ring goes on kind of difficult, but at the same time, if you hold it like that, you have best, better luck with it. Slide this on, you slide it into place. Unit looks good. A few scratches on it. But, you know, I mean, overall, not bad. Good looking radio. Needs a few things. Needs a few things. We're going to take care of that now. On the FDN1 knob, it's got the same center detent. Make sure that the knob is turned to the off position. You slide that detent into the... There's a V-groove right here. You've got to get it in there. It's made just for that. So you slide it on. It's halfway on. Give it a slight push. And voila. FDN line up. Let's see here. These are really good dust covers. These are ones that I would use. I always check up here and make sure that that's even clean up at the very top. You know, I painted my house, uh, painted my house last summer, and that guy mowing, uh, like the bastard that he is, had the nerve to actually, right while the house was drying, uh, I mean, the paint was still wet. Uh, damn moron decided to get out and start mowing. I could have killed him. Batteries look good. This is uh, an impressed battery. Let's go along. Okay. Even if I don't see anything, I still clean it anyway. I don't trust my eyes that well. This is a good battery. It needs a belt clip, doesn't it? I'd say so. And also, I like these antennas, but uh, we're going to put a different one on. Go with a Moto Turbo. Sorry, I'm kind of getting away from this. All right, for belt clips. Always get a heavy duty belt clip. Don't go for the cheap ones. The cheap ones will break on you. These are OEM. If it doesn't say 82 or 8266B, uh, pass on it. If it, I think there may be some that are unmarked, but just look for the heavy duty symbol on it. Uh, let me go ahead. It's not a whole lot that needs to be done on the back side here. It's done pretty well, actually. Kind of clean up the contacts. Put 
tags look very good. Check all the way around for the rubber to be popping out because you don't want that. Now, I need to get a motor turbo. I can't do without them. On UHFs, I'm going with stubbies. I've got both types, but this is a good one. There's nothing wrong with that antenna, by the way. Slider out. These are very good. They're so much more improved over the over the old style. Slide the connector down, work it around. Sit it in place. I've got a lot of things in here that I need to go through. But the seal assemblies, that's, the seal assemblies are actually, let's go ahead and I'll switch that somewhere else. I'm doing several things today and I've got parts pretty much everywhere. But, we can get this out of the way. So, there you have it. Will it work? Of course it will. Not bad at all. This I think is on receive only right now. Yep. So it is also encrypted. So in order for me to, it's, it's still not done. Because when you get units like this in, uh, you have to put them on the CPS because this is a military radio. Uh, you can tell by the call signs on it. So after it's gone through this, then, let me get this stuff out of the way. After it's gone through that, that then what you have to do is you have to put it on the, on the program and you have to clear the crap out of it because it's not the zones. Actually, this isn't set up bad. I'm surprised that he has a backlight on the top button because usually it doesn't. He doesn't. But the CPS isn't going to take, you can see the pixels are all there. That's a good sign. You always want pixels on your, Okay, that's volume set tone. I believe that scan. I'm not sure exactly how he's got this programmed. Okay, that's my favorite. Uh, got it set up kind of funny. And he's got this set to zone. I mean, that's fine, but, you know, I mean, these radios will handle a lot more than that. And, uh, but this is an FM approved unit. And just with a few accessories, you can do a lot with it. 30 minutes, son of a bitch. Well, that's about how long it takes to do a radio and clean it right. And now, uh, you know, if it does get if it does get taken, 
you know, if something, somebody, you know, comes along and breaks into your house or breaks into your car or wherever you've got your radio, breaks into the job site, takes your radio, uh, my radios go out uh, and I maintain records on uh, both serial numbers when I ship them out. Uh, this has been run through Trace and NCIC. It's clean. Everything's clean on this unit. But uh, I don't like marks on the radio. I don't like marks on the outside. And it's best to put them on the inside of the house. If you put them on the outside, uh, you'll see them on eBay. They'll take a, they'll hold the damn housing up to a grinder and just grind the damn thing, grind the letters off. They don't care. You know, nobody does. But what they're doing, you know, what you're doing is you're just, you're really not covering yourself. You're just, uh, you're just screwing up a good housing. So don't do that. That's not a good idea. But now you've got a clean keypad. And this thing is ready to go on the CPS. And I'll show it, show it to you. Transmit and receive. And it's got a nice FDNY knob. And it's a good radio all the way around. Nice impressed battery. But I'm going to switch to lithium ion uh, while I have it. I've got lithium ions. I like impressed batteries. So let's see if he's got... Okay, see, he doesn't even have on the battery, uh, he doesn't even have the battery level indicator on here. So, that's going to have to go on to the CPS. So that should be shown, it will. And he's probably had this impressed battery on a non-impressed charger, so I've got to cycle that, uh, cycle that properly. But it looks like a good, looks like a decent battery. What is it? 2009 date code, not bad. Uh, could be better, but could be worse. But that's a Model 2 UHFQ split. And I've got a couple chargers that are coming in. And actually, they're in right now. I've got one done, uh, version 3.0 firmware. And uh, it's a beauty. But that's pretty much it. Had a clean radio and do it right. Watch out for ESD, by the way, electro electrostatic discharge. I do use a band. Anyway, take it easy, guys, later on.